Hey all, good morning. Welcome to third meetup of our code quality series. This meetup is about refactoring. Before we start, a quick introduction about me. I am Kapil Sharma, VP Technology at DJ Alexander. I am working in web application development since more than 13 years now. My some contact details are available. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I am a little less active on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. But if you want to contact me, uh, Twitter is the light platform. I have my website kapilsharma.info and all of my slides are available on speakerdeck.com slash kapilsharma. After this meetup, I will also upload the slides of this meetup so they will be available there. A bit about PHP Reboot. PHP Reboot is a developers community in uh, Pune. We are conducting our meetup since uh, 2014. Our first meetup was in January 2014. Most of you have uh, RSVP on uh, meetup.com slash php reboot but i will also upload uh, this on uh, youtube so if someone is watching on youtube and you are in or around pune you can uh, go to meetup.com slash php reboot to check what our uh, next meetup is and rsvp to come face to face we also have a website php reboot.com twitter handle for our uh, community is php reboot we also have a slack group if you want to join the slack group please go on php reboot.signup.team we also have a youtube channel where I upload all of the meetup videos, not only meetup videos, but I am also uploading some tutorial videos there. So if you want to go through them, just go there. Again, remembering that uh, URL is not easy, but unfortunately, before we get uh, a human readable URL like youtube.com slash php reboot, we must have 100 subscribers. And uh, unfortunately, right now we don't have. So I request uh, all of you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will not only get latest information about the new videos, but it will also help the community. About our sponsors, we are sponsored by JetBrains, which provide ID license. PHP Storm is one of the very popular ID of PHP. We are also sponsored by DJ Alexander and Ernst Systems, who provide us space to, to conduct the meetups and snacks uh, during the meetup. Now coming back to our uh, main topic, refactoring. But before that, uh, this is third meetup of the series. Our first two meetups were about object-oriented programming and solid principles. If you missed those videos, you can go to YouTube channel. So what is code quality? Remember, this is code quality series. In this particular meetup, we are discussing about refactoring, but ideally, this whole series is about code quality. So what is code quality? As discussed in previous meetups, any quality code have two basic things. It should be easy to read and it should be easy to extend. What does it mean? Obviously, simple things are better. So if your code is easy to read, it will become simple and it will become easier to manage. Easy to extend, that means if you want to add a functionality, you should not break existing functionalities. A bit in details, easy to read. Obviously, code uh, should take less time to understand uh, what it is doing. There are few principles like uh, KISS, uh, single responsibility principle of solid. We should have small class and method names, consistent standards, commonly agreed naming conventions like that. Easy to extend means it should be easy to meet the new requirements of the future. And if we implement new requirements of the future, it should not break existing code. Something that helps there are dry principle, do not repeat yourself, open close principle of solid that we discussed in previous meetup. We should have again small classes and methods the code should be modular so these are few of the properties how to achieve easy to read and easy to extend part okay now we didn't get chance to uh, implement everything from scratch sometimes we can inherit some code or even if we got the chance to write it from scratch we are not perfect we might have done some mistakes so as if i have a bad code what is the next thing if i am having a bad code does it mean i have to survive with it forever no, absolutely not. We need to change. How will change? We will refactor. So what is refactoring? Refactoring is a change made to the internal structure of software to make it easier to read, that is easier to understand, and easier to extend. That means it should be easily extendable for the future changes. And all that should happen without changing observable behavior of the software. What does that mean? If you do refactoring, your code becomes easy to read and extend, but it do not change the functionality. How to do it? There are two step process. We need to identify bad code and we need to fix it. Simple said than done. So how will you identify bad code? 
To identify a bad coat, the, in refracting terms, we call it a smell. Like rotten food, bad coat smells. If we have some uh, rotten food, it starts smelling. Similarly, bad coat smells. Smell help us to identify bad coat. We will look how you can identify those smells. Once you identify your coat is uh, bad, then you are going to fix it. Fix it means refactor it. And there are a few refactoring tricks. Before doing that, you should know what are the possible refactoring tricks and for which smell which refracting tech can be applied so that knowledge is necessary and once you have that knowledge it's just action apply refactoring so let's discuss some of the smell first group is called bloaters so what is bloaters code that is used and become hard to work so we generally say if code is bigger it is not easier remember one thing simple is better and big things are not simple few examples of bloaters it could be a long class long method a long parameter list and data clumps. What is data clump? Long class method parameter list that is easy to understand very clear by name. Data clumps is basically identical group of variables on different parts of code. So you can also call it duplicate code or duplicate variables. Some of the refactoring tricks here we can extract the method. So if a method is too big we can break that method into two or more than two uh, different methods. If the class is bigger it probably do not follow single responsibility principle that we discussed during the last meetup. Then again, there is a thing replace temporary variable with query. We can introduce parameter object in case we have a long parameter list. Again, conditions like switch and if statements, they are always bad. There are some refactoring to decompose conditionals. Again, there are lots and lots of uh, smells and refactoring tricks. We cannot go with everything in this meetup. But still, uh, we have some basic examples. First thing, extract method. Here, remember one thing, what is easier than how? So if we want to say someone what to do, it's easier. But how to do it? It's not easier, right? It needs details, a lot of details. So we generally say what is easier than how? And that's the trick we apply. Assume this method, print owing. We need to print something. We need to print a banner. We need to print the details. It's pretty easy. It's just three line of code but assume it's a big code then extracting method means let's do it like that now print owing is having just two statements print banner and print details i don't care how the banner will be printed i don't care how the details will be printed that things should be answered by different method a print details method so now print owing is simply answering what needs to be done and how it needs to be done is represented by some other method in this case print details again this is just two three lines code i cannot fit a bigger code in that screen but ideally when we extract the method we do not extract one or two lines this is how extract method work then replace temp with query here temp stands for temporary variables so assume a code this is again pretty simple code but there is some complexity consider base price it has some calculation after that what we are returning it has some calculations can we make it easy to read Simple. Simply extracted conditions outside. We remove the temporary variable base price and introduce base price method. So whenever we need base price, we are simply calling that method. Now this code looks pretty easy to read, right? Sorry? Yes. Yes, I agree. So we are calling base price method three times. It's just a representation. We can call that uh, base price method. And uh, if we are calling a method again and again, it still makes sense to introduce a temporary variable. Yes. Yes, in programming, there are multiple right ways of doing the things. Next thing is introducing parameter object. So I have a parameter list. For example, here I have a start date and end date and we are having it in multiple methods. So why not create another class? And now we just need to send one parameter. In this way, we can cut down the parameters. Another refactoring trick is replace method with method object. So when we apply that, if we have a long method, but we can't extract due to local variables. As an example, assume this function price we have lot of uh, local variables primary base price secondary base price etc how we can fix it 
So our price now is very simple. We are simply saying price calculator dot compute and all the complexities goes into price calculator class. So this is uh, one of the way to replace method with method object. Another thing is decompose conditional. It is used to extract complex part of the condition. For example, refer that code. It is pretty simple code, but if we read it, it's not easier to read. Now refer that code. Is it easy to read? We have removed the complexities outside. So these are the bloaters, long class, long method, long parameter list, data clumps, and these are few refactoring tricks that we saw. But before we go to other smells, let's have a short break. We all know object oriented programming. So I assume you all know these things. What is interface or abstract class or class or trait? Simple things, right? Why we use interface? In first meetup about object oriented programming, we already discussed how and why interface are very useful. It helps us to define the contract. Abstract class is useful when we have multiple class and all of those multiple classes have some common functionality. So we can create an abstract class or a super class and pull up common code. Class you all knows it could be a super class, subclass, or you can uh, implement inheritance. You can extend and implement things. But there's one important thing, traits. What is the use of traits? Everyone knows traits? Good. So when we use traits, if I have two classes which has some common code, we need to take that common code out on a single location. Now assume if those two classes are related, I can create a common parent class and move that code in the parent class. But what will happen if those classes are completely uh, different from each other? For example, registration. At the time of registration, I need to confirm whether email is right or not. Now subscribe functionality. Subscribe functionality has nothing to do with registration. But at that time also, I want to confirm the email. Now assume invite functionality. Suppose your website has uh, invite functionality and uh, users are supposed to enter their friend's email address there to invite them. So if user is supposed to invite some of their friends, at that time also I need to validate the email. So we have email validation function. This is common to all these three functionalities, but ideally all these three functionalities are completely different. They can't have a common parent. This is the cases where traits could be helpful. So trait help us to write a function on a common place and we can include that function everywhere where it is needed. So we must understand these concepts. Now let's go ahead. Object oriented abusers. That's why it was necessary to understand basic OOPS concepts. So few candidates of object oriented abuser. You can immediately identify a switch statement. Now it's not necessary switch statement. It could be a long if else statement as well. We have temporary fields. We have request bequest. What is request bequest? Suppose there is a subclass that use only some properties or methods of the parent. That's the refuse bequest. Then there could be alternate class with different interface. Assume you have two identical functions with different names. So even though they are different names, basically they are doing the same things. So it's a duplicate code. And few of the refactoring tips that we can use to avoid object oriented abusers. We can replace type code with subclass or now design patterns, we are not discussing uh, design patterns in our code quality series, but it is also important thing. They are a state or a strategy pattern that we can use. So there's a refactoring trick called replace type code with state or a strategy pattern. We can replace conditional with polymorphism. Again, if there are a lot of parameters, we can replace parameter with explicit method. We can introduce null object. Here refuse bequest is little important. So let's uh, see it. If there is a subclass that inherit only some of the methods or properties of parent, this is called refuse bequest. And as we discussed in the last meetup about solid principles, it is also against the Liskov principle. Now assume that I have an animal class and I have a subclass dog. So dog have legs. I have another class chair. It also have legs. But does chair legs have anything to do with animal legs? That's wrong. In that case, we can use replace inheritance with delegation. Next is change preventers. It basically stop us to have future changes. Three important smells here are divergent changes, 
divergent changes are when we need to update a class or a sub part of that we need to update unrelated methods so divergent changes means changing unrelated methods while changing a class if we have something like that the correct refactoring for such thing is extract class then there is shotgun surgery which is exactly opposite to divergent changes that means one change in class required multiple method change if we are able to identify shotgun surgery we can look at move method or move field refactoring then there is parallel inheritance hierarchy it means while making subclass of a class we need to make subclass of another class if we identify that we can again have move method and move fields another group of smells is dispensables dispensable simply means useless to fix them we remove them removing them will make your code clean efficient and easy to read some of the examples are command duplicate code lazy class data class dat code speculative generality other things should be clear by name but what is lazy class understanding and maintaining classes always cost time and money so if a class doesn't do enough to earn your attention it should be deleted so if there is some useless class we can call it lazy class what is speculative generality it's again unused class method field or parameter i hope command duplicate code data classes dat code that is already clear to everyone another group of smells is couplers which means excessive coupling some exact coupler smells are feature envy inappropriate intimacy message chain middleman so what is feature envy a method access the data of another object more than its own data if i have a class and i am accessing other class data a lot we can easily say it is a feature envy smell inappropriate intimacy if one class uses the internal fields and methods of another class this is called inappropriate intimacy message change it's lot like middleman a arrow b arrow c arrow d it's a chain right and it's bad middleman if a class performs only one action for example we have a class a which is calling b and only job of class b is to call class c then why can't we call uh, c directly from a so if a class performs only one action delegating work to another class probably it should not exist so again this session is uh, probably more about giving you the introduction of refactoring there are lots and lots of smells just to give you the names these all are the possible smells alternate class with different name command data class data clump dat code divergent change duplicate code feature envy etc etc the goal is to identify all these smells just by looking the code so if you know each and every smell just by looking the code you can identify if your code is following any of these smells and if you identify if your code is having any of these smells there are refactoring tricks and these all are the refactoring tricks they are 60 plus so obviously we cannot cover all these things in a one 30 to 45 minute session but obviously this is more about giving you the introduction it's just the start of the journey not the end so what is the next step there's a refactoring book by martin fowler but unfortunately it is in java so if you are not familiar with java then there's another website sourcemaking.com/refactor it provide examples in many languages like c++ java it also include the examples in php and for these slides i have taken few examples from sourcemaking.com only other than that we have php reboot youtube channel on that channel i'm going to discuss about refactoring smells and refactoring tricks in detail with proper code examples so you can now follow the channel and you will be notified as soon as i upload next video there in code quality series that's all for refactoring next time we'll meet to discuss about qa tools so there are lot of qa tools qa stands for quality assurance and there are lots and lots of tools in in php world which can help you identify the problems with your code this particular screenshot has been taken from php matrix but there are many other tools as well so if you want to attend next meetup you can go and rsvp here so guys that's all from my side time for questions but before that let me stop the recording <laughs>